Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Jay Cohn. And I'm Janelle Slade. Students in Billings School District 2 are checking off their supply list tonight, but one essential will be missing when classes resume tomorrow. Mental health counselors previously available to middle school students here in Billings have now been eliminated. The Rimrock Foundation said today the decision comes amid statewide budget cuts. Q2's Asia Gore spoke with the foundation to bring us more of the details in the story. Asia. Jane Janelle, the Rimrock Foundation calls this a terrible situation and a major setback for students dealing with mental health issues. SD2 first implemented the two full-time and one part-time mental health counselors in the middle school two years ago. The decision was made as the dis district sought to address mental health and addiction problems among high school students earlier on. Rimrock Foundation CEO Lynette Kosovich says in just those two years, the counselors were making great strides with students at risk of suicide and other harmful behaviors. State revenue, though, didn't meet the target, and state funding for countless projects is drying up. The state does require prevention programs, and the Rimrock Foundation will meet that requirement by keeping counselors in the high schools. Kosovich told me she and SC2 Superintendent Terry Bauk will reinstate the counseling if in the middle schools if they can regain funding. Jane Janelle. All right, thanks, Asia. Today, the first day of classes for Billings Catholic schools and the excitement level running extremely high for the very first day of class at the new St. Francis Middle School. Q2 Samantha Harrelson was on hand this morning to show us the event. To all the students, I want to tell you, we're so glad you're here and you look great today. <laughs> but the one thing I would like to really tell you is this is a new building. Take care of it. <laughs> These people work hard. Today's the day to have our kids here and our families involved in our opening and have a wonderful ribbon cutting ceremony. That's awesome. It's what we've been working for. Hundreds of students will now be able to say they were some of the first in the doors at the brand new St. Francis School. You know, we're coming from buildings that are a minimum of 60 years old to 99 years old. So I, the biggest thing I heard when people walked in is, I mean, we thought it would be nice, but we didn't think it would be this nice. The new building combines three buildings worth of students into one, serving kids K through eight. It's really a community school. Um, we're a very diverse system and our, our kids come from all over the community, all over the county, uh, even outside the county. St. Francis opened its doors on Wednesday after years and years of fundraising and planning. Over 900 separate people, families and organizations donated to make this school a reality. It is indescribable to have that kind of backing and that kind of support and put a building like this together that will ensure Catholic education in our community for years and generations to come. In Billings, Samantha Harrelson, MTN News. All right, thanks so much, Samantha. Students in Lockwood also kicked off their new school year today. Billings School District 2 starts tomorrow for kindergarten through high school freshmen. Sophomores, juniors, and seniors begin Friday. Universities and colleges across the state gear up for the new semester. That's right. Cars lined up this morning at MSU in uh, Bozeman as new students were welcomed to campus. The welcoming crew, including Bobcat mascot Champ and the MSU cheer team on hand to greet first-year students. Classes at the University of Montana in Missoula begin the 31st of August. As for Montana State University Billings, classes do not start until Wednesday, September 6th, and Rocky Mountain College here in Billings kicked off its school year on Monday. The Montana Supreme Court upholds a jury's finding in a key campaign finance case that involves so-called dark money. The ruling today came in the case of former Bozeman state lawmaker Art Wittick. Last year, a district court jury in Helena found that Wittick illegally accepted and did not properly report campaign help from several conservative political groups. Wittick appealed on several grounds, including that some of the key testimony against him should not have been allowed at trial. Wittick told MTN News the ruling sets a bad precedent essentially allowing conservatives to be targeted for their political views. But State Commissioner of Political Practices Jeff Mangan says the Supreme Court properly upheld Montana's strong disclosure laws on campaign finance. Montanans need the ability and have the ability to uh, um, access 
a candidate's finance um, records um, for the money um, that they're spending on their campaign. And it's the candidates or the committee's responsibility to provide that information to all of Montanans. Um, and that's what wasn't done in this case and what we fought for um, and the Supreme Court affirmed. Wittick will now have to pay fines and court costs of at least $84,000. Fire managers in western Montana taking precautions as a windy evening could test the fire lines on the 33,000 acre Lolo Peak fire. The National Weather Service issued a red flag warning beginning at 5 tonight due to potential strong erratic winds between 35 and 40 miles per hour with gusts up to 50 miles per hour. Firefighters will patrol along highways along Highway 93 and in communities for structure protection. Highway 12 west of Lolo has been fully open to traffic near the blaze with a reduced speed limit of 45 miles per hour. Now, air conditions in Sealy Lake listed as hazardous for most of the day. Here in eastern Montana, Billings hit unhealthy for sensitive groups, which means that anyone with respiratory conditions or allergies should limit their time outdoors. A federal grand jury in Nebraska has indicted a roundup man suspected of carrying out a string of bank robberies in multiple states. 39-year-old Richard Gathercole was charged Tuesday in U.S. District Court in Omaha. Those charges include transporting a stolen vehicle across state lines, possession of a weapon, and transporting stolen firearms across state lines. The new charges stem from the robbery of the first Nebraska bank back in 2014. That bank, one of at least seven that the FBI says Gathercole held up over a five-year period. Federal investigators believe Gathercole is the AK-47 bandit who robbed banks armed with an AK-47 and was dressed in body armor. He was arrested back in June in Nebraska after he allegedly shot at a Kansas State trooper during an attempted traffic stop. During a raid of Gathercole's home in Roundup, the FBI found explosives and firearms. Gathercold, meanwhile, remains in federal custody. A horse here in Yellowstone County is the first in Montana this year to come down with the West Nile virus. The Department of Livestock confirmed the case last week. It happened in the central part of the county near Interstate 90 and 94. Assistant State Veterinarian Dr. Tony Shemansky says the horse will make a full recovery. West Nile virus affects people, horses, and birds and is spread by mosquitoes. Dr. Shemansky says about 30% of horses with West Nile die. There have been no confirmed cases in horses that have been vaccinated. Over the last couple of years, we've seen um, cases extending into October even. And so if a horse has not yet been vaccinated for West Nile, um, we think that it's still worthwhile in looking into getting that vaccine um, and still trying to get some protective immunity um, into the animal for the duration of this year's mosquito season. According to the Department of Livestock, about six to ten horses each year contract West Nile here in Montana. A fire broke out at a trailer home in Huntley this morning, causing significant damage. Firefighters from Huntley, Warden, and Shepherd all responded to the scene, which is out on Rocky Cliffs Trail south of Huntley. This call came in around 8.30 this morning. The home was unoccupied when the fire broke out. No injuries were reported. Tonight, the fire's cause remains under investigation. Still to come on tonight's 530 News, a Billings woman is alive thanks to a new life-saving treatment that's now available here in Billings. And in sports tonight, Scott shows us what Rockies football guys need to do for a season-opening win tomorrow night. And coming up in weather, I guess we can barely see it, but we are going to be talking about some more smoke in the sky and also some more rain moving in tomorrow. Yeah, we'll have more on that coming up in a few minutes. What about the weekend? Well, it looks like it's going to be sunny and hot again this weekend. Details coming your way in a few more minutes. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and Sports with Scott Green. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader.